Hey, physics peeps. I wanted to uh, explain this lab that um, hopefully you're going to get a chance to do today. So this is, uh, and I, and I want to say this is a formal lab, but it's, it's kind of a recipe book lab. So if you just kind of follow the instructions and get the data, hopefully you can see that this Newton's second law, which is F equals MA, that's Newton's second law. And we're going to try to verify that with this lab. Everybody has to do it, but the data collection, we can all kind of work together to get, and then we're all going to use the same data. And I've given you this data sheet, which is in the classroom. It should be now, hopefully, and I hopefully made, I tried to make sharing all open so everybody can edit it. Um, you're going to have four of these air tracks and you're going to set them up and I just, said the front of the classroom because I thought that would make the least disturbance, but you can really, you can put them anywhere as long as it's not distracting people. And you're going to have a rider, that's that red metal thing that you will find in that wooden box on the side of the classroom. Uh, and hopefully the TOC has the keys to get out the photo gates and the air tracks. Um, and hopefully you can find for those as well. So you, you're going to put the air track here and you're going to have, you're going to try to make this level. And the way you do that is you put the rider on in the middle, you flick it on. And if it goes really fast to one side or to the other side, you can put little papers under there or, or you can turn these little screws under here and try to get the track uh, level. And then you're going to put a weight on the end, but that's not the only weight. So you see here, it says 20, 40, and 60 grams. So in this case, you would have 20 grams hanging and the other two you'd want to put on the rider. So you can, uh, you can cut a couple little holes in there and hook them in there. It's kind of nice if they're, if it doesn't weigh the rider too much on one side, because then it gets kind of, it sort of, um, creates friction on one side of the track. So just kind of make sure that it's just moving freely and then you don't want your photo gate to be too close to the end because you want the whole rider to go through the photo gate and then you can either catch it at the end or if it if it doesn't bounce back through that's okay but if it hits and bounces back sometimes that adds more time onto your photo gate so it'll give you an incorrect time Okay, so you're going to do that a couple of times and we don't, I'm not worried about uncertainty for this lab. So you don't have to like do, do it five times and get an average. Just make sure that your times are pretty close to one another. Um, actually, yeah, no, I take that back. <laughs> do it three times and then put it in the data sheet here just do it one, two, three. And we'll, we won't get too carried away about the uncertainty. So I, I don't really take it back, but just put three values there. So I know you've done it three times and we can see that they're all kind of pretty close together. So you'll do that with 20 grams hanging. And then you go back here and you take one of these off the rider and hang it here. So there would be 40 grams hanging and 20 grams up here. The reason you do that is because that way we can change the hanging mass. So we can change the force of gravity that's accelerating this whole thing. So this is going to be Fg, which is equal to Mg, which is really just Ma, but the, but the A is obviously 9.8. Okay, and so we can calculate that force for these different hanging masses. But when we move that, there, our total mass stays the same. So make sure that you get a total mass and we're gonna put that right here. So that's the mass of your rider and the string and your three weights. And you're gonna put those on a scale. There's some triple balance beams on the side of the class. Um, and if it's over, uh, if it's too big, there's actually a bin of, this is kind of complicated. I think Mr. Cowan knows how this works but there's a bin of masses that look a little bit different. They're kind of like, uh, they look kind of like this. They have a metal tab with a hole in them. And they're kind of, they look kind of like just a weight and they're kind of beige and they're sort of plasticky. They're full of sand. And on the top, it'll say like, it'll say like uh, 500 grams. 
But then if you flip it around and you look on the back, it'll say actually blah, 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 because it doesn't actually weigh 500 grams. And the reason that we have those is because you hang them on the end of the triple beam balance and it acts like that that makes it so that you can read the so here's your like your here's your triple beam balance with all your little doodads and that thing kind of that thing kind of like balances right these bars and they move up and down and it has that little indicator thing and on the end here somewhere there's two like pronounced little screw hanger things and if you hang this on that then when you put all your blah blah on here if it's more than what it reads on here, you can hang this on here, and then you just add 500 grams to whatever it says on here. Okay, so if it's too heavy for this, you can put on one of those, or you can put on a, a one kilogram thing, and you can weigh more with this triple beam balance. Hopefully that makes sense, I don't know. Okay, um, so you're gonna weigh all your stuff, and that's your total mass. You're also gonna measure the length of the card on your rider, because that's going to allow us to get the final velocity, which is the length of this card, divided by the time on here. And I think some of you have done this before, so that'll be good. And then the other thing you need to write down is your uh, track distance. Oh, oh hi. hi Allison, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm making a video for school. Beth is wondering how much it is, 20 bucks? Yeah, 20. <laughs> Somebody took my kid to the movies and have to pay me back. Uh, okay, so in here, your length of card divided by the photogate time is your final velocity. So that's going to give you your VF is the length of the card over the photogate time. Okay, so that's that's distance over time, really, right? And that's going to give you your final velocity. And then we need this D as well. So Put your photo gate, if this is at like, let's say you put this at 80 and you release it every time from 20 and you want that in the middle of your rider, then this is going to be 60 centimeters, right? Which will equal 0 0.6 meters. Okay, and that's going to be the D. So when we calculate our acceleration, we're going to use VF squared equals VI squared plus 2A. D, and we're gonna solve for the A, which is gonna be VF squared minus VI squared all over two D. And so in this case, our VI is zero. So we just have to square our VF and divide it by twice the distance, and that's this distance. And that'll give us our acceleration. But this VF, we have to get by doing the card divided by the time. Okay, so do that, and each of you only has to be in one group that does just one of these things. And so you're gonna hang the 20 grams and hang the other two 20s on the rider, get three times. Then you're gonna move one mass from the rider to hanging. So now you have 40 grams hanging, you're gonna get three times. And then you're gonna move all three masses to hanging and then you're gonna get uh, three times. You're gonna get the length of your card, total mass and the distance of the track. Do the same three times and hopefully, if we get uh, four ones of those and if if each air track can have different masses, like 20, 50, 100, and then 200, and I wouldn't go any bigger than that because it gets kind of crazy, uh, we should be able to compare our, uh, our, our total masses with our accelerations. And then if the other half of the class does this again, and I've made an extra sheet, so that you're not all doing it at the same time. It looks exactly the same, but you second half of the class, you can do it again on this sheet. And if you wanna change up these masses a little bit, like if you wanna do 40, 80, 120, that would be awesome too. If you wanna, you can just change these and make them into different masses. Hopefully that works for you. And then the other half of the class is, I did a video of a lesson with a worksheet. And so you guys can take turns working with the air tracks and doing that lesson and just get as much done today as you can, and I will hopefully see you tomorrow.